Kings, I'm here now with a band that Tom DeLonge is cheating on me with. Please welcome Angels and Airwaves, Tom DeLonge, Matt Walker, David Kennedy, and Elon Rubin. Thank you guys for being here. Hey, what's happening? In the interest of full disclosure, uh, Tom and I actually play together in the band Blink-182, so this interview with this other band won't be awkward at all. <laughs> Will it? <laughs> all right, so let's get into it. When you buy Love 2, you get the last album, the new one, and the movie. You do. We, uh, we had a free record, and now we have a new record, and we have a movie. And if that doesn't work, we're going to include uh, a car. Cool. Uh, you know, uh, some pair of pants that we wear. Uh, OK, the, I want to talk about the film Love. So it obviously combines a lot of different stuff. It's outer space. It looks like uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey meets Gettysburg meets, um, I don't know, uh, one of my fantasy porns, something like that. <laughs> yes. How is film scoring different for you guys than writing regular songs? I found the, the easiest way to score, like you, we would play the film and you kind of play along with it. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, you, and you hope that you're finding that emotional kind of sensibility, but uh, it really is like less is more, at yeah. least with what we can do. You know, I'm sure with those great composers that you've seen all the big budget films, those guys are like crazy. I mean, I don't know how they do that stuff with like 50 piece orchestras and stuff. But for our kind of music, it's it's very just delicate. And and, um, and as you watch the movie, there's no singing in the movie. There's no real songs in the movie. It's it's all really atmospheric and, and minimal. Uh, what next big subjects are you gonna tackle? You tackled love, what, what's next? Well, this one's about, you know, human connection and, and human consciousness. And um, I, I would love for the next one to be about dreams and near-death experiences. I think that's really interesting to me and, uh, and interests, obviously, a lot of other people, what, what they're for and how they affect you in your everyday life. And, uh, and, um, and I, I think that tackling those subjects will give us the ability to kind of venture into different ways to score a film like that. I think that'll be really interesting. God, you're so weird. You're so weird, dude. <laughs> know, so okay, so in Blink, Tom's always for the past probably 15 years talked about conspiracy theories. What is his most go-to, you need to know about this conspiracy theory that he shares with you guys? Where do you start? It could Where come from you, anywhere. Really I mean, one time he pulls us into the room and he starts talking about an intergalactic battle between 52 million years in the future and 48 million years in the future. Somehow they got beef. Okay. <laughs> but somehow, and this guy has—he's—he's he's figured out it's like a kaleidoscope, right? You remember this, right? Yes, I remember. And it's where they can like—it's a prism, and they and they can—they battle through this prism. And he's like—he's—he's he's so. Did blindly, it not kind of make sense? No, when I said no, <laughs> not, not even for a second. Blindly believes it. Like, or what about Bigfoot being found in like Palo Alto? Those were <laughs> God, that he was comes the in. Worst. He were comes. Like, come, they did it. They did it. We're like, he comes it. running into the room, I right? Like the they officers. found it. Okay. And he pulls up a picture, you know, like on his phone or whatever. And it's like it's like two cops holding a, a styrofoam cooler with Bigfoot, right? Like a, so, a, a Bigfoot costume lost their jobs in it. For mine. <laughs> they, they did. They got fired. Two it's cops like, said they found Bigfoot. Well, it's it's pretty fun. Cooler. I don't know if you guys know this, but Tom told me where Atlantis was precisely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. I did find it's that 42 out. Forty-two feet week. down no, from Rancho Santa Fe. No, seventy-two miles northeast of the island of Sicily. If you guys ever have yes. three or four hours to spare, just Tom will tell you all about everything that you need to know for real. <laughs> and uh, Tom, you actually on the last tour you met President Obama. Can you tell us the story, please? And make sure you put in the part about how he likes our band. Okay, so I know this guy. When I campaigned with John Kerry, uh, I met this this guy that was an assistant to the campaign. And I remember asking him one night, I said, so what are you going to do if John Kerry doesn't win the election? He says, well, I might go work with that, that Senator Obama. I go, oh, wow, he's got a lot of uh, buzz going on with him. And so he did. And now he's got kind of like this job where he's like his buddy in the White House, plays basketball with him and all this rad stuff. So I called him up on the Blink tour, and uh, I got to go to the White House. And I'm in the hallway, and he comes walking down the hallway. And uh, the guy I'm with, his name is Marvin. He, and, he, and he's standing with me, so President Obama knows that I'm friends of Marvin, which is his buddy. Mutual friends now, maybe? Okay, Mutual, fair enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he goes, whoa, is this your buddy? Hey, we like your music and all this stuff. And, uh, but this is what caught me off guard, was how happy, uh, just a handsome, charismatic, happy man. And I'm like, kind of going, but aren't there like multiple wars and people dying? And it's like crazy. He just like, you know, oh, this is the best story, and I'll, I'll end it with this. I go, I look at Marvin at lunch. I go, did he ever just go, what did I get myself into? Like, why, why did I do this? And he goes, no, but two weeks into the presidency, he's in, he's in the White House. He calls Marvin in, and he goes, yes, Mr. President. He goes, I'm president of the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did that. I made me super stoked. I was like, that's cool. So what's next for Angels and Airwaves? We're going to do a little bit of touring and um, just uh, start trying to get people to see the movie and hear the record across the globe. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Always a pleasure, Thanks, Thomas.